Hey everyone, my name is Yaro and you're listening to the DIY Small Business Podcast. Thank you so much for your patience and thank you for spending some time with this podcast today. I needed a tiny break while I was traveling and had some guests stay with me here and I'm excited to be back with the last episode for 2019 and for the decade. Um, friends told me that that's a big thing on social media at the moment, that the decade is ending and we're meant to be thinking about how to end on a high note. I'm ending on a sleepy note if I'm honest. I'm really pretty tired. I have a lot to reflect on and integrate, some of which is really beautiful and I would love to share that with you today. And I'm not making that many plans for next year yet, but I still wanted to record an episode with a little bit of a business recap for 2019. I want to share a little bit about what I've observed, what kind of trends I'm seeing, what has worked, what hasn't worked so well in my own business and other people's businesses. And I also want to touch base on um, leaving social media for a month ago and tell you a little bit more about how that's going and how I'm feeling about it. So yeah, I thank you for tuning in. So before I start, a few things um, that I'm offering at the moment. You are welcome to book a free feeler call with me if you're interested in working together next year, either for a web design project or for business mentoring. I am really excited about those two things and um, have space um, kind of a little bit further into the year. And then I'm also opening eight spaces on the DIY business community. So to recap, that's a community, a course, and a program with monthly group coaching calls, monthly themed workshops, quarterly business planning workshops, and really journaling prompts. Um, it's over in Mighty Networks, where everyone has their own little profile. It's a bit like being on your own little Facebook, but with other like-minded business owners. And it's really good fun, yeah. I'm still always recording new sessions for the chorus. Um, the group coaching calls are a really beautiful way to be together and feel less alone. We support each other, we ask questions and ask for feedback. And it just feels good. It's the kind of program that I would have really wanted when I was starting out. And um, to make it easier to kind of orientate yourself and also to offer something um, a little bit lower in cost than my one-on-one -on -one mentoring program over three months. I'm offering a whole year of membership starting in January together with a one-on-one -on -one kickoff session with me in January. So you can sign up for a year that includes the course itself, which has 10 modules, um, as well as all the monthly live calls. There's at least two of them each month to kind of really help you stay engaged and in a growth mode. Um, and in excitement and in support and then you'll also get a one-on-one -on -one session with me where we really can map out your individual journey through the program think about your priorities and what your next steps are um, and that is $300 or three payments of $100 and I'll link to that in the show notes okay so now let's talk about 2019 Whew, I want to begin a little bit more chronologically about how this year has been going. Last winter was a little bit slow for me. I think right up to Christmas, I was working quite hard, was launching new things. Um, and then January, February, I really slowed down and I really needed that. Um, my health wasn't that great. I was just not bringing that much new stuff out and I felt like I about that. I am. Um, think it's really important to make space for those kinds of periods sometimes and to just be honest about that as well. Um, I um, also, the, the DIY business community went into a second year. That was really exciting. It really kind of made me feel like, yeah, this is sustainable. I can do this for years to come. This is something that's really needed. It's not some kind of one-off offer or like an eight-week course that's meant to transform your relationship to your business and then you're on your own again. But instead, it's like a long-term, um, deep experience that is going to give you as much as you're putting into it. And I think I also really wanted to offer this experience of there always being support available at any point in the year that you can dip in and out of as you need. Because we all live cyclically, cyclical in some ways, right? Um, some of us experience periods of expansion while others are taking things slower and it's really nice to meet in the shared space. Um, so I feel like that has grown slowly and organically. I haven't done any big marketing pushes this year, um, but that felt good and uh, I want to continue in that path. 
I also, in, in the late spring, began offering business mentoring. And that's really interesting. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun to work with people one-on-one. -on -one, but it's really not something I have ever expected to do. So when I started out five years ago, obviously I saw a lot of business mentors around. And I yeah was fascinated, I was interested. Um, but I really never set out to become a business mentor. And how that came to be was that I started as a web designer and was really, I am still really passionate about creating good uh, custom WordPress sites. And then I also began offering tech support and kind of surrounding stuff like social media strategy, content support, um, launch project management, that kind of stuff. And obviously that meant that I got to see so many businesses from the inside or from behind the scenes, which is really interesting so I feel like I have a very strong foundation in understanding software systems and at the same time people's intentions and really what motivates and thrive and makes them thrive and what sparks their creativity that kind of stuff um and I also understand design and I have supported many many launches it with definitely very different approaches over the years so I feel like I can give people a really good overview of what's possible and available while also providing gentle accountability in a container within which stuff really gets done so that feels exciting to me um but like I said I had never really seen myself as a business mentor it's as such an it kind of unfolded very organically um, from people first beginning with web design and then booking me um, in a more ongoing way for social media content and launch support and then being like hey actually I'm noticing that a lot of my client calls kind of shift into the area of mentoring more and more and would I maybe want to offer that as a more uh, intentional container around business mentoring so I started doing that in late spring I've worked with some really really beautiful people um, I have a bunch of really lovely clients in that area at the moment and I'm just excited to see things unfold and just really yeah really enjoy holding that space in that way my web design hasn't hasn't shifted so much this year I've um, created a good bunch of websites and I really still care about making them long lasting and sustainable so I'm not really chasing after big trends in web design I just want to create platforms that people can work with for years to come and that they really understand and can edit and update themselves um, so I'm still kind of really also caring about not pe making people depending on my work but instead really empowering to understand how the website has been built and how they can make changes to it and that feels really good to me and Divi the platform or the theme that I'm working with has made a bunch of big updates this year um change is always hard <laughs> especially in tech if you've become used to you know doing things a certain way but anyway I think these updates are really great they've really expanded what we can do and how we can integrate um the WordPress site into other services and so I've mainly focused on that on mainly making the most of that and also simplifying that in the way I'm teaching working with Divi and WordPress Otherwise, of course, there's been new software developments this year outside of WordPress that have been interesting. So I started using um, a service called Bonjoro, for example, with which I'm sending custom welcome e emails to people who sign up to my newsletter. Not always. I haven't been as consistent with that as I wanted, um, but it's definitely on my list in my mind. And I think it's a great tool. Um, as you know, last year, I so this was 2018, I also switched to Mighty Networks and I think um, this is a platform that many people enjoy. It's really great to have a community outside of Facebook um, where we can connect without getting distracted or kind of weighed down with social media. Um, and then Patreon is also something that's still, I think, at the forefront uh, for many small business owners, which is really exciting. I can't think of a new social media platform that kind of came out this year the way that maybe Periscope has a few years ago, um, but I haven't really been looking, so maybe there's stuff out there that I don't know about that might well be true. Um, other big things that happened for me in the summer is that I left social media in August relatively spontaneously. Um, I had at that point been talking to a friend for a couple of years and sometimes said like, oh my god, wouldn't it be nice if we were just known enough for our work that we wouldn't have to be on Instagram every day anymore. And then I had this moment this summer after moving to Scotland where I looked at the um, 
a Zen Scream app and I realized that I was spending 10 hours on average on the app and I couldn't, I just couldn't believe my eyes and I didn't want to be in this experience of not having enough time for other things that I really cared about anymore and so I made a clear break there. Um, I, do, I did prepare over a couple of weeks. Um, I checked all my links. I made sure people knew about my newsletter if they wanted to stay in touch. Um, I mapped out kind of a list of other things that I wanted to do to um, kind of share my work more outside of social media. I reached out to a lot of people about being on my podcast and I transferred a few hundred contacts kind of well, I think like 150 or so into an Excel sheet for people that I wanted to still stay in touch with um, outside of social media. And I've referred to that list so many times since. It's really cool. Um, just a really different, less overwhelming way, I think, for me to hear about what people are up to. Um, so that's cool. I still want to reach out to so many people about being on either of my podcasts and haven't gotten to that yet. But it's definitely something that I want to do next year. So yeah, there will be many more interviews. I think leaving social media and really realizing that it didn't mean that everything just came to a halt or I didn't lose business um, as such. I think I made pretty much, yeah, I think my income was really consistent between kind of June and December and I left in August. So there wasn't like a dip in income. I can say that. Um, I, I will also say I think there has been less interest maybe in some of my courses that I would usually promote on social media, but because most of my one-on-one -on -one work is coming from recommendations, I haven't seen any decline in that, and that feels really good because I love working with people who are friends of people that I've already worked with, and I just really love this community of mutual recommendations and supporting each other, and that, that's great. One of the things I've been doing instead of being on social media is writing zines. I've published six over the next few last few months. Um, I've really enjoyed sending them to people and linking to them for free in my newsletter. And it's been nice to kind of share something in a really different medium. I hadn't created a zine in a few years, uh, in case you don't know what they are. They are self-published with little booklets that come out of DIY culture. And I've written some about moving to Scotland and becoming a country career and about things I've realized while hiking and about loss. And yeah, it's been really nice to talk to people about them. Another thing that I've done more of is podcasting. Um, that's also been really big off my wish list. I've been able to be more consistent with bringing frequent episodes out. I spoke to more people for interviews and that's been really rewarding and nourishing and again that's something I really want to focus on next year as well. My Patreon has shrunk a little bit. I want to be honest about that. I have had mine for about two years now and I've seen a decline for several reasons. One is um, in winter and spring this year I was bringing out a lot less podcast episodes and sharing less on social media while I was kind of like hibernating a little bit. Um, and then also another factor is that I've shifted payments for some of my programs. So initially people would pledge for both my Embodied Magic program, which belongs to my other business daydream roles, and the DIY business community, which belongs to Yara Digital on Patreon. And now the business community is actually paid separately so naturally some people would have shifted or some people will have left and they've been replaced by people that haven't signed up on patreon but even right now where i don't offer anything specific um to patrons i've had new signups and that was so touching like i really want to say i gosh it made me so happy to see that people sign up to become a patreon and just pledge a couple of dollars just to see you know show the support for the free content that I'm creating with the, this podcast, for example, and my other one, Daydream Rules. So that's been really just super heartening, and I really appreciate that so much, and I really do want to more, offer more exciting things for patrons next year. Um, I need to turn off WhatsApp. So sorry. <laughs> um, I forgot that before I started recording. Um, okay, where was I? Okay, so we talked about Patreon a little bit. I still think it's a fantastic tool, and I have so many ideas with which you can build a Patreon or really use it as a tool to support your creative or healing practice in some way and also offer people a chance to, um, you know, receive little extra treats and support you 
in a way that means you have more sustainable income. I have about 115 patrons now. At its height, it was about 150. And that felt really good. And I'm excited to see kind of how I'm going to build it next year. As I've already mentioned, I have ended the Embodied Magic program this month. This is a program that I've been running for two years. Um, <clears throat> it began as something called Monthly Magic. And it was in the end called Embodied, Embodied Magic. And it had at its, at its height about 75 people in it. Really, really loved doing that. I was offering monthly themed uh, kind of packages with self-care tools like herbal recipes and playlists and recorded meditations and self-massage practices. And we also had live monthly calls. And yeah, like I said, that was really beautiful. Um, and also I'm ready to create something different next year. Um, and I'm, I was just feeling kind of at the end of my creativity and ideas didn't flow so much anymore for what to create and what to add to that program. And I just don't want to kind of spam people with content or create stuff just for the sake of it that I don't feel absolutely excited about. And I'm also noticing that many of us actually need togetherness and a space held so much more than more content um so that's something that I'm sitting at at the moment and it was just really liberating to say this month okay this is going to be the last month in its current form and I'm just going to give myself a real real break over the holidays to think about what I want to offer patrons next year and and generally what I want to offer with daydreamer walls because I'm really excited about my breathwork training I'm really excited to offer breathwork and that kind of um more reflective intuitive container to my business clients as well and I'm just not totally sure certain yet what I want to commit to and I won't rush rush that process so you'll hear more about that in January or in February um for, for now I'll just say it's definitely okay to pivot if you want to and we should always remember that our businesses are meant to be fun. They're meant to help us make a living and express ourselves, and they're also meant to be fun. I've also been thinking a bit about what it means for a business to mature, and I recognize that what I've just said in a way is a privilege as well. Many of us begin businesses because we're unemployable for all kinds of reasons, and we don't always have the luxury, especially often not right away, to say, oh, I'm not going to do anything that isn't fun or um, I just, I'm just i just going to follow my heart, you know. It is often more complex than that and I, I think I'm very lucky now to feel like my businesses are both maturing and I don't know exactly what that means, but I think I sense some more freedom and autonomy and really the trust that I can do things differently and that something like leaving social media is not going to end my business, if that makes sense. I'm also wondering about what is regenerative, so thinking beyond sustainability, beyond just looking at my week and thinking, can I work like this long time, long term, is this financially sustainable, what do I really want, like what do I want to regenerate in myself, in my communities? Um, this is just a question for now. I haven't found a really good answer, but just sharing my thinking. Like I said, I'm observing also that people want togetherness more than more content and that less is more. And I think that's maybe a way in which our business culture is maturing collectively. And I'm interested to see where, where else that is going. Um, and I'm also finding that it's often more about unlearning. So really, when we think about it, the internet is still very young. Podcasting is still very young. You know, these are not things that have been with us 100, 200, 300 years. They're very new technologies in our lives, and we're just beginning to understand what they do to us, what they do to our relationships, our brains, the way we act and to interact with the world, and the things that we believe possible. So... I think, for example, um, the story that artists always have to be poor is something that we're unlearning rather than learning or the idea that we have to be post on Instagram every day. You know, that's something that we can unlearn and that will be the next step rather than always reaching for the next program and the next thing that's shiny that we should think we should learn. 
My main intention right now is to really, really rest. So today is Monday. I'm going to stop working on Thursday. I'm going to work three more days and and then I'm going to really wind down, put my autoresponder into my emails and I'll be gone till January for two whole weeks. Yes. <laughs> I am adopting a little puppy that's moving into my home tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. And I just want to be super present with that and just rest and nap and sleep. Maybe play with weaving a little bit, but otherwise just take it super easy. I have some ideas and it's tempting to, tempting to kind of get the journal out and write about them or map things out for next year. But I really think that I will be more creative and expansive in my thinking if I, if I really give myself rest first. And I'm inviting you to think about what that means to you as well, what you really want from the holidays before you sit down and map out uh, your year or decide what success is going to mean to you in 2020. Yes. I don't really have a lot more to say. Like I said, I'm excited to bring up more episodes next year. I'm excited to speak to more people about what their business journey is like. If you want to be interviewed or you want to send someone my way, let me know. If you want to work on a web design project next year or receive some business mentoring or join the DIY business community, check the links in the profile. If you have any feedback, I would also love to hear from you. And I just want to wish you really beautiful holidays and a great start to the new year. Thank you so much for listening.